Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's fun that we are having these uh, colorful Zoom backgrounds. Uh, <laughs> I hope this is going to give you a laugh, or, uh, not to just log out and run away. Uh, okay, uh, today we do our final session on Shakespeare's uh, Hamlet. Uh, I'll, uh, I was expecting some of you to present, uh, but we can do that next time. Uh, I'll, I'll comment on some uh, issues, two questions, and then I'll go through uh, the list of questions I already posted on Facebook last week, and I expect you to give me your insight and your input. So unmute yourself and give me your opinion, your answer to the questions. Many of these questions are opinion-based. Uh, don't be uh, afraid, express yourself, uh, uh, say whatever you have in mind. But usually in order to make sure that uh, you're, you're doing a, a good job, refer to the text, link what you say uh, to, uh, to the text. Uh, so, okay. The first point that we raised uh, several times is why was the revenge delayed? Why didn't Hamlet just kill the king the moment he uh, decided to ma marry his mother? Mm, definitely he, he because let, remember later on he said, oh, prophetic soul, when he was told by the ghost that uh, uh, I was poisoned by your uncle, a serpent that uh, bit me uh, is actually sitting on the throne of Denmark. So uh, he had a hunch, at least, not like those Trump's uh, hunches. Uh, but again, he didn't reveal this before, only when the ghost told him uh, something but we saw how he treated the king badly why didn't hamlet uh, do anything he was sad he was mourning there are uh, actually uh, so many things we can we can say here uh, simply speaking if the ha if hamlet killed the king soon after he was told by the uh, the ghost we wouldn't be having hamlet it's like when you watch uh, a TV show, uh, crime, uh, crime scene investigation sort of thing, and then five minutes into the show, they get the, uh, the criminal and they know how he or she committed the crime and everything. There's not, there isn't going to be any more, more drama. But that is a very unpoetic answer to say this, to give. Uh, and, he, and also, I, I know we've been uh, joking around about uh, suspending our disbelief, but that's also most often an unpoetic uh, answer. Uh, you have to, to be careful when to use these things and to use them sparingly. I suggested earlier that if Hamlet killed the king, we might end up with another Macbeth, a typical Macbeth. What would you do if you come to the throne after killing the king? We have the, the story already there. So the killer, the journey into, so the story is not Claudius' story, it's Hamlet's story. There are so many answers to this question. It depends on what theory you use, you apply. Uh, we already discussed the uh, Freud psychoanalysis uh, 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 and the Oedipus Rex, Oedipus Complex. Uh, I'm not going to go in, in detail here. Somebody wanted probably to do a presentation, but remember the, the gist of this uh, uh, theory is that Hamlet wanted his father dead. That's like, that's his subconscious, his unconscious. He wanted him out. And when he was out of the way, why would he kill somebody uh, that uh, killed the person he, he himself wanted dead? Doctor. Uh, how he uh, how he did know that uh, Hamlet wanted his father dead? That's that. This is the theory. That's actually the theory. When you examine uh, uh, Freud, when you study it, uh, he will give you uh, textual evidence. He will elaborate on Oedipus Rex himself, how he killed his father unknowingly and married his his mother. This, all, his, all uh, his concern was he uh, he was angry about his mother's saint by his uncle. I, I didn't see it. Okay, he, he, loved, he loves his mother. Everybody loves his mother. Mm. 
But I don't know, like, uh, it's like he wanted his father, his father did just like to have his mother, to own his mother. That, that for many people, Freud is irrelevant to Hamlet and the theory doesn't make sense. I agree. But again, uh, 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 this is a theory and many people believe in this, that Hamlet has an Oedipus Rex. An Oedipus complex, an Oedipus Rex complex, an Oedipus complex uh, is the, the subconscious people have against their, their fathers, uh, according to Freud. You could just take it as crap or nonsense, up to you. But what I want to focus on today is new historicism, which is also another theory. I'm not teaching you theory here, just giving you the, the basics of what this indicates. Uh, new historicism is understanding literature through the context, the historical and cultural uh, context, and vice versa understanding literature through history, and understanding history through, uh, through literature, going back in time to try to make sense of what's going on now, because this is a text that happened, uh, that was written uh, 400 years uh, plus ago, uh, and it was actually inspired by something that was written uh, hundreds of years uh, earlier. So how does the text help us understand uh, the Elizabethan uh, time of Shakespeare? a little bit before, a little bit after, and how probably does this text help us understand even Denmark uh, centuries, uh, centuries back? The issue here basically is that uh, the play comes at a turning point. Even it was written around 1601, 1602, something like this, depends on. So even the play itself was written at the turn of when, when Queen Elizabeth was dying and she was replaced by somebody, she was getting very old. Uh, but more important than this, the older age was ending was, uh, uh, was uh, in a way changing and new and a new, a modern, the Renaissance was uh, emerging. It started uh, like decades earlier. But with the changes here taking place between the old age the old feudal age, age of chivalries, chivalry of knights, of fighting, of uh, uh, resolving conflicts by combat, by skirmishes, by fighting, by blood, by killing each other, into a modern world of thinking, of logic, of justice, of courts, of lawyers, of universities. Now, old Hamlet belonged to the old age, to the feudal age, the heroic age, in which if there is, and this is, this, we, we, Horatio you told us this, there was the, the dispute between Old Hamlet and Fort, Old Fortinbras was resolved by a combat by trial. When kings would be leading the armies, a combat by trial when uh, instead of just the, the soldiers fighting, they agree that, okay, let's fight. If I, if I beat you, I win. If you beat me, you win. And Old Hamlet won the, the, uh, the duel. He killed Fortinbras. He took the land, the piece of land, the plot. Uh, now, even when the ghost reappeared, it came again wearing the full armor of the war. This is a man living in old, in old English, old medieval times. Now, Hamlet is totally different. Hamlet is a young man. He's a modern person. He's a university student, he's studying philosophy. He's, an, he's a scholar, so to speak. He lives in a time where disputes should be resolved in court by justice. You do just don't, if you have a problem with somebody, you just don't go and fight with them. And at the same time, it's true that, listen, the Elizabethans believed, so to speak, so to speak in ghosts. But in Denmark, you know the Prince of Denmark? In Denmark at that time, people did not believe in ghosts because it was a Protestant country. Uh, it was only the Catholics who believed in ghosts. For the Protestants, ghosts were an old, stupid, uh, Catholic superstition. They didn't believe in this. So look at Hamlet. He's modern, university student of philosophy. He's living in, an, in a new age, an age that is changing. And a ghost comes from the dead and tells him, Hamlet, please, K 
kill this man because I am your dad, he killed me, and he stained your mom. Now, this is a very significant, this creates a very significant, very profound conflict in Hamlet's mind, Hamlet's psyche, Hamlet's ident creates an identity crisis, what to do? And that's it's a perfect answer here, to be or not to be, to do, who am I, the question. Now, Claudius, in a way, was the link between the old and the, the, the uh, he, he killed his brother. And, but he tried to re, uh, resolve all the problems with, with uh, Norway by diplomacy. He's a man of diplomacy. We've seen him uh, do what he did. Now, for Hamlet, what should he do? Should he listen to a ghost that he doesn't believe in, that he doesn't trust 100%? A ghost, we, we saw last time how the ghost is loaded with uh, uh, contradictions and mysteries and ambiguities. Confusing. Okay, should Hamlet go, uh, that the problem here is that the state itself that is supposed to be carrying out the law, protecting people, is the state that is violating the law, is acting against outside the law, the rule of law. Huh. So what should Hamlet do? What would you do? Would Hamlet go to the king and tell him, please arrest yourself because I have evidence that you killed my father. And again, what evidence does Hamlet have? Nothing. So this confuses Hamlet, and even Hamlet himself is confused. Sometimes he's, he, he doesn't believe in God, in philosophy, he just, and sometimes he, uh, he, he believes in God, he believes in fate. There is doubt about what's going to happen in, after death, but later on he, he, he's an absolute believer. Does he love Ophelia? Does he love his mom? Or are we all women bad, weak, frail? Now this kind of confusion created because there's a tension, a conflict between two contradicting ages, two ages, two uh, constructs, two sets of constructs, the old and the modern, confused Hamlet, made Hamlet a person of uh, split identity, I don't know. And that's why it took him ages and ages, months and months to do what, to do what he, uh, uh, what, what he had to do. And we've seen his journey, remember? His journey into... <laughs> Good luck, Baba. Labni, let's take the game. I'll get from you. Yeah. So uh, uh, that's why the journey Hamlet. This Hamlet had to go through through a, a journey of initiation, a journey of self-discovery, a journey of self-identity. To get to understand who he is, what he wants, what he wants, what, where he is, where he, where he stands in life, and that was that's why the journey, the metaphorical archetypal JSC journey, was significant, and that's why later on there was no more soliloquies, right? And he declared it; he didn't even mention his father. Khalas, he got rid of his father. He didn't want to kill the king because he killed his father. He wanted to kill the king because he threatened him, because he poisoned him, because he killed his mom. In front of the people, with evidence, with concrete evidence, hard, concrete evidence is presented. And even with that, killing the king itself is not an easy thing, historically speaking, morally, everything. Even with that, Hamlet, remember, we, and I, I highlighted that point, Hamlet said, uh, close the door, something like this. Lock the doors, because even killing the king, he doesn't. He wants it to stay inside. He doesn't want the evil to spread all over Denmark, like it did in King Lear, Macbeth, destroying the whole society. So I'll go through some of these points. This is to me. This is one major reason why Hamlet didn't, uh, because this is this conflict, this uh, uh, identity crisis Hamlet was going, going through. So, uh, 
uh, we talk about new forms of thinking emerging and, and that were conflicting with and competing with old, old ones. In the past, in the Middle Ages, uh, the trial by combat was the major means of, of justice. I get the energy. I get the gene. And now later on, Queen Elizabeth herself, because every lord was, uh, had the, uh, a, a group of soldiers who would be fighting here and there, you know, just to, because there was an attempt, a coup attempt, a failed coup attempt against the queen. She, she deprived all these lords of their arms. Because in the past, the, these armies would be fighting and skirmishing in the, in the, in the streets of, on the streets of London. So she took everything here. Now, all the hand, it belongs to the, uh, the old world of heroic chivalry. Even the ghost appears in full plate uh, armor. Probably Claudius can be the link between the old and, and the modern, in a sense. Now, the state's court later on and judges tried to control these disputes. Even the, the aristocrats would go to the court in order to solve, resolve these problems on time. Uh, the, 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 the question with Hamlet, like I said, I'm repeating again, he was a student uh, with Horatio at the University of Wittenberg. Uh, he didn't believe in ghosts because in Denmark at that time, they didn't believe in ghosts. Uh, it says here, this is from the book I told you about, Shakespeare, the basics. Uh, I, I think even the, the Elizabethans, because even England, Elizabethan England was majorly conflicted between Catholicism and Protestantism. Remember, because somebody brought the new, uh, new England church, and then somebody went back to Catholicism, and then back to being Protestant, and being back to, uh, to, to Catholics. Okay. <laughs> So everybody is uh, uh, making use of the fact that I'm giving a class online. So they just, it becomes a trial by combat but back home here. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Hamlet lives in a state where justice is not privately settled, but publicly resolved in front of courts. He's supposed to be living in this society, but it, again, the, the state itself was corrupt, was, uh, was bad. When Hamlet kills the uh, Polonius, the chief minister of the king, we know by mistake, we saw what Laertes himself did. Laertes is not a university student, he's different. He doesn't have to think, he doesn't have all these complications, he doesn't have any, any, any uh, identity crisis. He almost carries out a coup. Remember, he wanted the whole king, the whole kingdom, like he was calling for the, the overthrowing the king himself, dethroning the king himself. But remember what happened, because this is basically what the ending is what, uh, for many the ending is not Hamlet's doing, it's Laertes is doing, it's actually the king's doing, who pushed Laertes to do this. But remember, this reminds us that blood feuds lead only to further bloodshed, because we've seen almost everybody died uh, then. So we can see that also, uh, also the problem with the modern system of, of justice, the question I just raised, what would you do if the state itself is, is corrupt? It's committing the crimes that tells you you shouldn't be committing. Hamlet can't go to the king and kill, tell him, hey, you killed my dad, so please go to prison. Once you step out of the framework of the, the rule of law, even if you live in a modern state, you go back to the feudal, blood feudal and personal revenge. It's not about the time, it's about what you do. And again, this leads us to the issue of Hamlet's uh, identity. He seems unsure. Is he a madman? Is he called insane? Is he pretending? Is he uh, an Avenger? He's an actor, a player, a producer, a poet, a lover, or a hater of women? So many confusing things about Hamlet. This is in, in drama and tragedy, usually the protagonist has to go through this kind of process of losing his identity or, and then in a way regaining it. It's possible to be a prince like Hamlet 
and and probably we didn't speak about this earlier. Hamlet must have been deprived of all his privileges by by the king because the king was trying, you know, to keep him under surveillance. So he can't see clearly who he is anymore. He's a prince, but he has he doesn't have. He's the son of the king. He doesn't become a king. His mother, he is no longer his mother. His father is no longer his father. His uncle is no longer. What else does he have? So he, Hamlet clearly, cannot clearly see who he is anymore. And this is a tragic issue here. It, it, it's really sad. We see people around us like this and we feel sad about them. He, he is an intelligent person, a man struggling to live among the deceptions, contradictions, and stupidities, stupidities of, of uh, the societies. And this makes him uh, 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 tragic. He doesn't, he isn't, 100% involved in this corruption, but he becomes part of it eventually. Now, Claudius recognizes this uh, in Hamlet, and I like, I like this sentence. It actually needs a lot of time to elaborate, but we don't have it. The book here says that uh, it is the time in which Hamlet has to live that is actually out of joint rather than Hamlet. It's not Hamlet himself. The time he was living in because the king pretend to be a modern king a diplomatic king he's a thief he's a liar he's corrupt so hamlet was living in the wrong time it's not probably about being in the wrong place that is why he has no stable identity in a disjointed and contradictory society imagine this that's a really horrible thing uh, to do if you want to comment, anybody? Please say something, anybody. Yes. Go on. Uh, you just say that um, his mother is not, uh, his mother, uh, no longer his mother, okay? Uh, why is that? I don't, I, I don't think Gertrude was playing the role of a loving, affectionate mother. Because, she, because of the hasty remarriage, she admitted this herself. She said this to the king. Okay. Uh, and the fact that she didn't help Hamlet become the king could be another reason. Ahmad al-Khatib is saying, he did, I, I don't think that Hamlet, uh, that, uh, uh, Polonius's death was an accident. I agree. Yeah. Oh, uh, Hamlet is saying Okay. I agree, Ahmed. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Tasneem says it is contradicting how Hamlet didn't believe in ghosts, but he took the word exactly. This is part of the contradiction. He didn't take the word for granted, and that that is one reason he doesn't wholeheartedly believe in it because later it was like oh maybe it's a it's a goblin damn it's but probably it's, a, it's, it's an evil he, evil spirit he did everything the ghost told him not everything I what did mean, he do? in the part of the play within the play he did exactly that, what the, the that, ghost that, told that's, him. that's the only thing yeah but the play itself was his own idea probably inspired by what uh inspired by someone like hamlet doing like a silly play that uh, a child can like be irritated by is something i don't know not like so so smart from him not hamid thing like he he could like change he could written uh, a whole play a whole like wilderness play that the king could not understand that hamid is is intentionally irritating him but that's possible that's possible yeah um Go on. So, in the to be or not to be soliloquy, Hamlet said that um, what do you, uh, uh, death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returned. But he still exactly. believed that that was a ghost who returned from the dead. But, but remember, we said this is dramatic irony because just a scene ago, two scenes ago, Hamlet, yeah. you were talking to somebody who came from the just dead. Came back from that country. So, yeah, this is part of. Hamlet's uh, identity crisis issue here. So yeah, I agree that he doesn't wholeheartedly believe. Uh, 
And that's why he wanted evidence. He wanted the play itself was, yes, inspired by what the ghost said, but also Hamlet wanted to, wanted more evidence, more concrete evidence. Now, look at this. Uh, when you make a decision, tell me about yourself. When you make a decision, okay, uh, sometimes it takes, it takes a lot of time. Sometimes you delay, right? What kind of decisions? And when would you delay and uh, taking action? T tell me about your personal experiences. Have you been planning to do something uh, for ages, but you didn't do because of something? Can you share your experiences? Anybody? Uh, yes, I could give an example, but not oh. like an experience. Go quickly. Uh, I Okay, so I think that you face difficulties choosing something when you have uh, like a lot of options, such as an example, like when you finish school and you want to get like into a major in college, that's okay. when you delay to like find out what do you really want. So yeah, that's an example. That's an excellent example. Yeah, I agree. Sometimes it takes ages. What, what, what do I want to be? What do I want to study? It's about like, it, yeah, it, the, the results themselves, Whatever results you might be expecting could make you delay. So whether they are favorable, unfavorable, what else? Why would it take you ages to do something? Yes, Why would I, it take? I, I, I want to say something. Uh, delaying uh, plans is uh, depend depend uh, depend on uh, like you have a better idea or better plan for it. So that's why people like sometimes delaying the. Uh, their plans without what uh, uh, i didn't say without what but uh, i was saying delaying plans is depending on uh, like you having a better idea that's why people delay delay, yeah. delay their uh, plans. Give me an example example yeah uh i don't i don't have a certain examples actually it's not for that. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you delay because you wait for the perfect circumstances to do something. Okay. Now, if you want to describe Hamlet in a word, to use a particular noun to describe Hamlet, what is Hamlet? Who's Hamlet? If, if, we, if we want to do a spider gram and describe Hamlet in, in nouns and adjectives, It's a confusing character. What else? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Tell me who's Hamlet? What is Hamlet? If Hamlet is writing a CV, what is he going to write? Or if you want to tell people about Hamlet in one word or two words? One, two I words. Would use, I would use the word Hamlet is, a, is basically a kaleidoscope, which is basically like imagine you yourself being in a room full of, I don't know, I don't know shattered mirrors. And with different mm -hmm. reflections and different sizes so let's, of your. Actually, let's, Ashan, let's organize this. Use nouns, only nouns, one word to describe Hamlet. You either write down or say, uh, unmute and say stuff. Maybe procrastinator. He's a procrastinator, correct. What else? He's a victim, correct. One word. Containable. What's that? Uncontainable cannot be categorized. Okay. What else? Quickly. A conspiracy theorist. I don't think Ham. I don't know. Is Ham a conspiracy theorist? Skeptical. He's hesitant. But I want nouns. Can we start from nouns and then go to adjectives? What what roles does Hamlet play? Genius. Okay, he's a genius. What roles does he play in the play? He's a player, he's an actor, correct? He's an Avenger. What else? What roles does Hamlet play in the play? That's an easy question. An actor. He's an actor, what else? In the play. He's the hero, he's the prince. He's a prince. 
what else? He's an author, correct? He's a writer, he's a director, correct? Use only nouns. He's a detective, correct? What else? Detective. More, give me more. Give me more. Are you still online? He's a poet, correct? He's a protester, possible. More. From the play, from the play itself. What did he do in the play? What roles did he, what social roles did he play? He's a lover, correct? Is yes, man? I don't think he's a friend. He's a playwright. He's a son. He's a stepson, correct? He's a knight. He's a an avenger, correct? He's a student, correct? He's a swordsman, correct? He's a killer, correct? He's a critic, a social critic, pardon, correct? Lovesick, possible. Language specialist. He's a linguist. I don't know. Hmm? Don't use adjectives, not yet. Don't use adjectives, not yet. A panner, a man of puns. A thinker, he is a thinker, possible. He's a joker, correct? Yeah, he is a joker. He's a comedian. He's a comedian, correct? He's a criminal, that's right. He's a victim and a victimizer. He's a philosopher, that's right. He's a poet. Now, if you imagine the nouns here, you're using to describe him, there will be even more adjectives to use to describe Hamlet. And in my opinion, I listed some of them that just very quickly before I started this class. I'm not sure if I mentioned all of the things you, ju you just did right now. He's a poet. He's a man. He's you. He's me. He's a son. He's a prince. He's an heir. He's a student. He's a poet. He's a lover. He's a thinker. He's a hater. He's a planner. He's a killer. He's a murderer. He's an avenger. A nephew. Right? He's a stepson, an heir, a player, an actor, a producer, a playwright, a critic, a fighter, a philosopher. He's an ex lover, an intellectual, a modernist, a friend. He's a classmate. Adjectives also like young and single. He's an ex. And he's a bully, right? He is a bully. Didn't he bully uh, several people there? Abdullah is saying he's Palestinian, probably Hamid is a typical Palestinian. He's a fighter. Now look at this. Who mentioned the university thing? We have very limited options in our lives. We don't have many things much to do. And then it takes us sometimes ages and ages to think, to consult, to talk to people. Imagine someone with this spectrum of attributes or features. Some very contradictory. Is it going to be easy for him to take this decision? I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be easy for him to take this uh, decision. Okay. Uh, now, the second point I want to move to quickly for the sake of time. Uh, remember, uh, I raised this in the class and we discussed it. I want, just want to go through it very quickly. Uh, but remember the statement I gave you? Can somebody remind me of the observing people, observing people, observing people? Do you still remember that? Somebody wants to, to, to remind us? Now, it's clear that in, in Hamlet, usually uh, the attention of the audience is split. 
when you look at the stage, you're not looking at just one thing. Usually more than once, you look at two things at the same time. And this thing started with scene one, with, uh, uh, with us observing these, the, the soldiers, the guards, and then when we, they mentioned a ghost, probably we'd be distracted looking around for a ghost. And it happened in scene two again, when the king, remember we're expecting Hamlet. You see no Hamlet in scene one. In scene two, he's wearing black, he's mourning in the corner of uh, the place there, and everybody else is celebrating. We know his father has just died. And there's this, like, this king who's celebrating, who's using this horrible contradictory language. Very, very contradictory. Some, some describe this language, his language as uh, basically uh, gore in a very graphic, very contradictory, very hideous. When he says, our sometime sister, now our queen. Why is this sorrow? What is even why is this sorrow? When he spoke about uh, mirth in funeral, mirth meaning happiness, and dirge in marriage, sadness in marriage, what can I? So our attention is split between Hamlet, watching Hamlet who's silent in black mourning, and the king and everybody else celebrating and clapping for, for the king. The same thing happened in a very, very extensive way when uh, we were watching the play within play. It's not only that, look at this. Hamlet tells Horatio, okay, let's, the play is the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. So I'll watch the king and watch me with the king who is going to be watching the play. We are the audience. We're watching Horatio, watching Hamlet, watching also the king, watching the king, watching the play. So there's this, so many layers here. That's why I, I, I think I said something like, this is a situation where probably we are also observers here, we are audience. We are observing people, the audience. We study, we examine their reaction to have, we say, we always say, what would uh, uh, the, the, what would the, the audience do here, react? How did the Elizabethan audience react to this? And many people like to focus on these things. So we are observing people Observing people, observing people, observing people, observing people. We, the readers now, are observing the audience who are observing Hamlet and Horatio, who are observing the king and the queen, who are observing or watching the play within play. Whoa, what is that about? It's a beautiful thing, this idea. I, I mentioned this in the class also. I just want to raise this very quickly. We discussed it earlier before the corona, before the corona era, okay? Uh, it's, uh, there is uh, pre-corona and post-corona. So the play within play is an act of shallowness from Hamlet. Like uh, from Hamlet, uh, uh, Khalid just mentioned this. But a stroke of genius from Shakespeare. I want you to think of this, go back to the information I gave you in in that class. The play itself is, is childish. It's very simplistic. It's the play is the thing we're in, I'll catch the conch of the king. This is one of the cunningest kings ever. He's playing everybody. He killed his brother. He married his sister-in-law. Okay? And now he just watches a scene and he's, oh my God, oh my God, I confess I killed my brother. But from Shakespeare, this is a, a stroke of genius. We mentioned several things. I want you to go back to your notes. We discussed how this could be uh, Shakespeare pushing the boundaries, uh, Shakespeare uh, rejecting the strict teachings of classical Aristotelian drama of the unity of action, unity of time and unity of, of place. And I mentioned other things, please go, go back uh, uh, to them. Another important question we discussed is the dramatic uh, the dramatic and thematic purposes of the comic scenes in Hamlet. Classical uh, critics would hate the fact that Hamlet has so many digressions and deviations, especially the comic scenes. 
the subplots, but especially the comic scenes. But Hamlet is, is, is loaded with these. They're just not in passing. They become sometimes a core issue of this whole play. So what dramatic purposes and thematic purposes could there be? Can somebody tell me something about uh, the comic scenes other than, you know? I think it is what we call literature, dark humor or black comedy. It's a kind of mm -hmm. relief for the audience because this is it's a relief. hell of tragedy. It creates a relief, that's correct. What else? It's also a means of um, adding more characterization to each character. Uh, for example, when we know that Hamlet always likes to crack jokes and always likes to make fun of people, so he's in, in a way a bully. And we know when we know that Polonius is so redundant, and he he always like when Hamlet tells him about the the cloud, he says uh, it looks like a whale or something, and it looks like something else. So I think it adds to the characterization and to the layers of the character, especially uh, especially with the when when this is dark. You know, the, 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 the grave digger scene, the, the dark humor here is really unsettling in many ways. So the, the person is, but he's, he's, he's very familiar with death. He doesn't care. Death doesn't threaten him. It threatened Hamlet. Banan is asking if the, the aside is a strategy of splitting the attention, that's correct, because we're watching say, the, the actors and then somebody takes an aside. So we thought, who are we going to? pay attention to. Uh, think more about these uh, important uh, issues. I want somebody, maybe somebody can present this. We talk about, talked about the, the time scheme in Hamlet, how time moves and what happens in the, uh, but I, if you want to do a presentation, go to the book I uh, quoted earlier called What Happens in Hamlet? Something Wilson, the author, and what happens when and where? in between the scenes and how the time moves. That's a very interesting uh, thing. When you write, remember when you become a, a writer, write short stories or poetry and or fiction novels, usually it's not what you say that matters. It's, it's not what you don't, it's what you don't say. You know, I think the unsaid could be more important than the, the said. We said Hamlet seems to be too idealistic because he believes in the power of drama and words. Do you agree? Do, do you, who believes in the power of words? Can words change people, change attitudes? Have you ever been influenced by somebody's advice, wisdom, teachings? Uh, I think yes, actually. And maybe that's that's why the reason he actually made the play within the play because he thinks that words might affect like the king and make him like shut up like, about what he did. Maybe that's why he did it. Hmm. Okay, so you think that that's that's one reason why we have the play within the play because Hamid believes in the power of drama, the power of drama to change people to influence them. Okay, more. Who doesn't believe? Who thinks that words are silly? People don't change because they hear a line of verse or because somebody gave them advice. People change because they are forced to change. Because they have to change. They, they have no choice. Now keep thinking about this. And does this make Hamlet uh, 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 an idealistic? Ahmed says, I think because the human beings' expressions are words. Yeah, we, words are everything. And I'll, this is one quote I love from Hamlet, words, 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 when Polonius asked him what he read. Words, words, words. But again, it's, it depends on how you arrange and order them, how you present them. It's not the what, remember? It's the how that matters. Okay, uh, Abdurrahman is saying that in addition to the words, there should be a role model, should be an action. Don't uh, 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 preach what you don't practice. So give me your advice, follow them, show me that you are a good role model, and I could be. That's a very interesting also also thing to add. Which one of Hamlet's uh, uh, soliloquies do you like the most? Hmm? 
Which one? Do you like? I think the most monumental example is be or not to be. To, to you, not to, to the world. To you, which one touched something, like sparked something in you or sparked something in you every time you read it? Yeah, for me, be or not to be, because my mother is frequently telling me, uh, be or not to be, you have to work in yourself. Uh, by the oh. way, my mother is English uh, student at one time. Who's English student? My mother were at, the, at Azhar University. So she studied she's English. familiar. She's familiar with Shakespeare's uh, work. So she keeps quoting that. Okay. Yeah. Nice to have a mom who knows Shakespeare. So she'd always hammer you with uh, with this. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What about the last, uh, the last uh, final soliloquy? Hmm. So Sarah says she likes the last one the best. It's page 150, almost 150. I love that too. I think it's, uh, there's more determination here. There's more understanding. I have cause and will and strength and means to do it. From this time forth, my thoughts be bloody or be nothing worth. What a piece of work is a man, Muhammad al-Hartani. He's not a soliloquy. Shakespeare is ashamed of you. Dua. Shakespeare is ashamed of you. That's not a soliloquy. Okay? I'm sure he's not ashamed of you, but I'm just kidding. I told you because that thing, I, uh, that, that's two misconceptions about that uh, bit. Number one, it's not a uh, soliloquy. Number two, it's not poetry, it's prose. That, that's the last one, yeah. Go to their graves like pits, like sleep. Type, uh, my favorite, my most favorite line from Hamlet was this line, no. <laughs> that was act act three scene three i guess it says here act three scene three scene three when, when is that can somebody remind us we love this i'm not sure if i highlighted this yeah it's page one two eight uh, in another soliloquy when hamlet was standing with a dagger uh, over the king and he said, to take him in the purging of his soul when he is fit and seasoned for his passage? No. And I love that it's just one line, one word. No, full stop. And he just said, okay, I'm not going to kill him. I'm sending him straight to heaven, to paradise, because he's praying. So I usually just advise my, my students to be uh, to to be able to say no. The more you say no, the more you are, you feel at peace. So it's it's important to help people. It's significant to help people, to be out there for people. But don't translate for free. Don't edit for free. Don't sell yourself free or cheap. People think it's just translation is. Uh, it takes ages and ages. It consumes you. It takes your youth, your energy, your prime, your stamina when you translate. So that's why I like this. So other than which of Hamlet's line, lines or line, other than this, included the soliloquies, do you like the most one liner, other than to be or not to be? Yes. Yeah, say? Uh, there's no uh, either good nor bad, uh, but thinking makes thinking itself. Makes it so. That's good. If it be now, th these are two lines, Ahmad. If it be now, it is not to come. If it, if it be not to come, it will be now. If it be not now yet, it will come. Okay, that's still nice. What else? Listen, the most fascinating, remember I said Hamlet keeps giving. It never ends. It's all that's new. Sometimes, like I, I, I have taught Hamlet like for, for seven times. I've read it like more. And every Can time you... Every time you find surprising new lines, sometimes, somebody, sometimes some people quote something from us, is this from Hamlet? And then I go back to, oh my God, that's from Hamlet. So every time you discover new things, 
a little more than kin and less than kind, this is also a favorite of mine, who else said, the last conscious does make cowards of us all, that's correct. I love this, I love this. More? Hmm? People? Yeah, can I answer? Go on, yes. Mm, and uh, I admired uh, with uh, the line in 62, which uh, says, in this distracted globe, remember thee. Uh, okay. uh, it reflects how much Shakespeare is uh, very creative. So he, so, uh, he uh, played in words. In my mind. Uh, yeah, globe. Okay, think about. There is a bun here. Yeah, correct. Pun on what? Um, uh, it uh, has two meanings, uh, so uh, uh, we uh, don't uh, understand if, uh, if um, he uh, uh, is world is or theater. With the whole world or the theater, the globe itself. Yeah. Follow my mother, Rahmat and say, okay, I like this, follow my mother. Tayyip. Is Hamlet an anti-feminist or worse, a misogynist? What do you think? Who thinks Hamlet is anti-feminist? Yeah, I think he's clearly a misogynist. Okay. Um, he, uh, there are many horrible people. His, uh, his uncle, the king, is, is maybe one of the, like, the second most terrible person after Hamlet. And still he didn't say a word about men, but because Gertrude did something or Ophelia did something, he um, said, frailty thy name is women, uh, and he generalized. Uh, so he didn't refer his uncle's bad deeds to his gender, but when Gertrude or Ophelia uh, do things, which are not as horrible as, uh, Males uh, they, deeds. They didn't yeah. kill women. King, yeah? Women are bad. Yeah, women are weak. Women are uh, malicious. I don't know. So this is why he's clearly a misogynist for me. Even not a, um, anti-feminist, a misogynist. So he doesn't yeah. only think women are not equal. He hates women. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. And it was also I, a quote at the end where Hamlet says, "I'm carrying trouble, a burden that women can't carry, can't bear." So he does think that women are not uh, as yeah. equal or as Yeah, but it comes out of his uh, um, yeah, hating, hatred of, of I, women. Usually people who try to defend Hamlet or Shakespeare would say he is as anti-feminist as any person in the Elizabethan age. Well, I, I'm not saying, if you I'm make, not saying Shakespeare is, is mis misogynist or, or anti-feminist. If you're saying, if you're saying, that he's a misogynist, this is a huge argument. But I want you to spend more time researching and trying to, would you justify this? Not, uh, not William Shakespeare. Do you think not Hamlet is a feminist? Somebody says, says something? Uh, yes. Uh, do you think that Hamlet is anti-feminist? You're asking me? Yes. Uh, what's your opinion? Answer. If I tell you my opinions, you're going to say, okay, that's the answer he wants in the exam. I want you to use, to say whatever no, no, you just, want. No, just your opinion. I don't tell. <laughs> when we finish the course, I can't tell you what I think. That's okay. what I said. I didn't but say that. Exam, William Shakespeare. In the exam, Ahmed Lahza, in the exam yeah. I want you to express your opinion. There's, there's no right or wrong answer like Hamlet. There's no, uh, but uh, I'm not going to say wrong because I think it's Hamlet- literature. Has, so support your, ev your argument with textual evidence. I'm going to be fine with that. Ahmed, continue in a minute or less. What, what I said, uh, I didn't say that Shakespeare is anti-feminist or misogynist because he has Portia and, and like, uh, she's one of my favorite female characters in The Merchant of Venice. She's um, um, a feminist, a real strong, oh. independent, oh. clever. What? Okay, but so this is, uh, you're just thinking that Hamlet is saying, Hamlet yeah, is the, the character point. is, yeah, in a way. I don't know if I can relate this to uh, people claiming he's um, bisexual or uh, something about his sexual orientation, I'm not, I'm not sure, but I think that it's clearly that um, 
he considers the gender of women when when he deals with them. They're weak. They're um, I don't know. Frail. They have some yeah. sexual depravity. They are Inferior. easily manipulated. They are. They can easily be stained. When he spoke, yeah. he said, uh, "He hoard. He stained my mother." So women always should be, you know, because they can easily be stained. But men can do anything, and they can't be stained, even if you kill a king. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Ahmed okay. thinks uh, Hamlet is anti-feminist. Uh, uh, Sarah says he doesn't care about women. Banan says his problem is that he generalizes. That's correct. If you hate Ophelia for what she did to you, okay, what, why would say all women are horrible? When he talks about, uh, uh, about how she's be hiding behind her beautiful face or something. And frailty, thy name is woman. So all women are frail. But we also, so, very, very briefly, Abd Abd Abed. I think he wasn't, he wasn't actually anti-feminist. He was anti-feminist just with uh, women who hurt him. But we also remember that he was uh, flirting his love, Ophelia, I'm typing it now. Uh, and he was, as you see, doubt thee, the star or fire, etc. Et he was anti-feminist with, with those who hurt him. But yeah, you say I hate you. You don't say all women. He should, I don't know. You say, mom, you are too weak. Instead of saying frailty, thy name is woman. I don't know. Uh, doctor, can I add something? Okay, briefly. <clears throat> okay, so you're, so you're like focusing on Hamlet's like point, to, like point of view to women. But let's like look at the play itself. Like it's showing that Gertrude is like weak for her lust. And she like only stayed with the king for her like, I don't know, for her lust. And because like he's young maybe, I don't know. And it showed that mm -hmm. Ophelia is sometimes uh, dumb. And like, well, like when she relieved Hamlet that was shaking and stuff like that. So why Hamlet? Maybe the play whole itself, like it's an anti-feminist mm. play. That's, that's an opinion also. It's not Hamlet's problem. It's the society itself, the play itself being there. So he knows only two women, maybe. Maybe we don't know. So we, I focused uh, on this. I love this thing. I love... Anything related to self-criticism and parody and fiction, I love very much. Because the text here is conscious about other texts. Okay, You're referring to uh, other texts usually makes us conscious that this is a, a, an act of, of, of literature. So ha Shakespeare does this all the time in Hamlet. He makes fun, he alludes to other kinds of, 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 uh, of, of plays, uh, especially Marlowe, the Marlovian plays and others making fun of them because they are very cheesy sometimes. They exaggerate, uh, uh, they overdo things. Everybody speaks poetry, highly embellished language. Uh, so ha Shakespeare is, is, is telling the people, the audience that come to my plays, I am very realistic. I am more engaging than those people who just want to show off their linguistic and poetic, uh, poetic abilities. But think about this because this is really beautiful. Parody and metafiction. Uh, a very important question also. I just want three or four minutes, five maximum. Uh, this is a very important question. If we have, we're not going to have, I'm not sure if we're going to have any say in the, in the final. If it's going to be online, there's not, there isn't going to be any say. Uh, but if this is a final exam, I would be asking you a question like this, but without giving you the, the stuff in brackets, because you need to use two or three of, of them to write a, a full, uh, you say. So Shakespeare uses several theatrical and literary devices to keep the, his Elizabethan Jacobian audience entertained. Discuss three of them. We have the soliloquy, the aside, the parody, the allusions, the comedy, the uh, comic scenes, remember the references to things in the past and at that time, and the self-criticism and the puns and these things. So think about them and, and how they relate uh, to the audience. So I remember when we spoke about uh, the, the, how does it look? Is, and, 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 and the man is expressing his inner thoughts, the, 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 whole, the actor, reaching out to those people, reaching out to the audience, telling them secrets, making them trust them, identify with them more. But also the soliloquy could be some kind of an, a self-hearing. You just want to hear yourself. You, you, you're planning, a, a, you're thinking aloud. So you make sense of what you, what you say. You get it out of your head. You, kind of externalize what you have inside. 
So think about these and how they keep engaging and appealing to the. Uh, we asked about the question. We asked about. We asked just just two minutes. We asked about the ending. What do you think about it? What would you change about the play? Just this. This is just for fun. Think about about that. Uh, I'm sorry. Finally, uh, if Hamlet, uh, which character in Hamlet do I identify with most? Yalla, tell me. So we finish. Which character in Hamlet do you identify with most or do you like most? And tell me why briefly, if you can. I think Polonius. You are Polonius, okay, that's very strange. Why? You helped me for a long time. I what, think Horatio. No, 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 the, uh, the, the person who said, who's, who's that? Yes, I am Polonius. Why? He didn't enjoy enough in life, yeah, and he didn't live long time. So what, he was victim. Polonius is an old man, man. Come on. Yeah, yeah I'm just kidding. <laughs> Again, it's, it's up to you. Two minutes. It's, it's up to you to like whoever can, who, to identify, but he's an old man. <laughs> yeah. Oh. For me, Horatio is my favorite. Okay, that's nice. Why, Zaid? Because uh, he's a loyal uh, nobleman and... Uh, nice. So you like loyalty. Yeah. Haltani says yeah. Hamlet. Sarah says Horatio. Ophelia. Uh, Horatio. Who says Ophelia? Me. Okay, what, who, who are you? Because uh, she's... Uh, I'm Ahmed. Um, hmm. She's an obedient and uh, an innocent one. You want to be obedient, Ahmed? Not all the time. Like, okay. you know... Mm. That's interesting. Okay, I, I want to ask the ladies this question. If you have to choose between Ophelia and Gertrude, which one would you choose? Which one would you identify with most? Are you an Ophelia or a Gertrude? The ladies, you can type. No, 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 you have to choose one. Ophelia, Saba says. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Ophelia, definitely Ophelia, Ophelia. No one wants to be Gertrude, haram alaykum. Oh, so there's a Gertrude, okay, why? <laughs> Gertrude, so we have uh, one Gertrude. Think about that. I'm not going to ask you uh, uh, just to uh, tell me your secret or something, just uh, think about it. And he just, I have one minute and then I'll uh, uh, turn this off. So if somebody wants to say something, please do. We identify with Hamlet the most, other than Hamlet. He is just like us. He has the issues, the conflicts, he overthinks, okay? She is a horrible, banana, uh, she's a horrible mother, she is, and she's a horrible wife in a way. Maybe, but again, don't jump to, maybe her first husband was horrible to her. So she might have to answer the So this is where you need to take the things that are not made because definitely, no, sorry, sorry, not definitely. Old Hamlet was not a good father. When you come from the dead, you don't express your love to your son. You horrify, terrorize him with graphic description of your death and what's happening in, in the purgatory. And you tell him, go kill this man, the king. So maybe if he was bad to, Ham to Hamlet, he must have been bad to, to, to Gertrude. Maybe she has an excuse. Okay, somebody, I don't know who this is, says, I'd rather be obedient than a traitor. That's a really interesting thing to do. So, but remember, Ophelia, in a sense, betrayed Hamlet. That's correct, Rola. Hamlet tells us that Hamlet was good to her husband. He didn't even want the breeze of heaven to, to, to blow uh, uh, on her uh, in a tough way. That's something good to bring. Hamlet says so, but there was no evidence. She didn't 
يعني we, we don't take Hamlet's word for granted. We trust Hamlet. I trust him, Hamlet. But I don't take his word for granted. That, because we need to hear from Ophelia. Afwan, from Gertrude. We should sympathize with Ophelia more. She presents a lot of women in our country, correct? Weak and... Uh, I like the grave digger, Khalid says. That's nice. The king, Abdullah, you want to be the king? Uh -huh. The ghost, Banan, wants to be the ghost. The ghost himself told Hamid not to kill her. Yeah, yeah. Mash, you can't take this as a sign that he likes her. Thank you for bringing this. Don't kill her. Like in Moshkila, listen. No, I don't think this was an, an act of love. This is an act of, again, evidence, more evidence that women are presented as weak and poor. He described her as a slave of her lust, sexual depravity. So spare her. She's too weak. She couldn't resist. Huh. We're, we're digging out more anti feminism from the text, by the way. So he says, I think uh, uh, you don't give the girls the chance to speak. No, I am not anti-feminist, Saeed. Uh, Horatio, uh, because he reflects a good friendship. So many of you like uh, Horatio. The ladies mostly like uh, Ophelia over Gertrude for some reasons uh, mentioned. Uh, I don't want to take any more time. I'll stop here. And next class, we will begin Othello. So please. Uh, I sent you the PDF file already of the play. Read the introduction into Othello so we can start uh, next class and do scene one and two. Thank you and see you inshallah next week. Take care, stay at home, wash your hands carefully. Yalla,